Good day and welcome to the Think React Lead Show. I'm your host, Dom Fawcett, your executive coach and leadership speaker. And we are in studio today <clears throat> with my main man, Steve Sims. So, you know, some shows you watch and they have this formatted bio that they read off. You guys have watched enough TV shows where that happens. Well, this guy does not need that. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I know about Steve Sims. <clears throat> Steve Sims is that kind of guy that, uh, and, and he's going to correct me if I'm wrong when anything that I'm saying. He's that kind of guy that when he throws a, a Christmas party, he will use the Louis Vuitton on, um, what is it, Melrose? Beverly Hills. On, yeah, in, in Beverly Hills. He's the guy that's friends with uh, Richard Branson. He's the guy, so you guys know I race motorcycles or track the motorcycles that will, so I have a regular Ducati, if you will, who shows up to the track with the, mo like the Ducati V4 R, which I'll explain to what that is later. He's also an author. He is a world-renowned speaker. And he's just a good dude. Steve Sims, thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate that. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> First, right off the bat, um, your brand is next level. And I, I do want the people to get to know you. But more importantly, how long have you been curating your brand? Oh, do you know, that's that's a fantastic question. Seriously, because I didn't. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to it, and that was the best thing I could have done. Okay. You see, so many people today they pay attention to their brand. I'm going to launch a framing shop. I'm going to launch a car, you know, superstore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to launch a rock band. Right. And then they start trying to be individual by looking like everyone else. Exactly. Now I realised that I, I had no money. I wanted to work with rich people. I looked weird. I had piercings. <laughs> I had tattoos. So the best way for me to be able to get to work with the people I wanted to was to ignore me mm -hmm. and focus on you. You know, I'm going to help you get into the parties you want. I'm going to help you walk down the white carpet with Elton John. I'm going to get you to meet Elon Musk. And by doing that, they ignored me and they focused on what I could provide. And then subsequently, it was a case of he was the guy that did it. So I actually avoided branding for many, many years to then suddenly realize that branding is what people say about you. Mm -hmm. Marketing is what you say about you. And you did this by not saying much about you. You just I said something it. about yeah. the other people. I completely ignored it until without realizing it, I had built the brand. I had built the brand of being the guy, as Forbes said, the real life Wizard of Oz. And That's exactly that right. takes us to the next step once you've got a brand, hey, congratulations, <laughs> but what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. And that's that's where it starts to get creative. So you, when I heard about you, somebody just introduced us on social media mm -hmm. and there were some similarities, but shortly thereafter, somebody told me, they said, Dom, if you want to have a dinner on a Black Sands beach with, at the time, Whitney Houston singing in the background. Steve Sims is the one that can make that happen. Mm -hmm. They even thought of doing something like that. Nobody thinks that way. One of the things that you do or don't do, you don't do what everybody else does as it relates to, here's a bunch of products, buy my products, but yet everybody knows who you are. I'm not gonna ask if that's intentional. How do you manage to become continuously known without doing what the masses are doing? It is intentional. It is 100% it is intentional. You see, the guy that goes out and floods his Facebook postings with pictures of a dog, that's not intentional, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't, think, I don't think social networks, for me, are social. If I want to be social, I'm going to get with you at a bar and we're going to drink too many whiskeys like right. we have done at right. uh, Bourbon <laughs> and Bones. You know, that to me is being social. Mm -hmm. Social networks are platforms mm -hmm. for you to expose who you are, what you're into, what you can do, what you're about. And so I move with impact. If I'm doing a speaking gig in Arizona, I'm going to start peppering it so that I can maybe get other gigs in there. And then I'll talk about it. And then I'll talk about the gig I'm at to raise credibility. I have I have a, a very easy mentality. And I don't know if it's because I'm old. You know, I'm 56 now. Are you? Okay. Um, but I always look, does this move the needle? Mm-hmm. Everything I do, does this move the needle? You know, what I'm doing, posting this on Facebook, is that going to move the needle? Doing a gig, will it move the needle? Me posting a picture on Facebook of, of doing something that's irrelevant is wasting your and my time. So I'm very intentional of where I show up, 
and how I show up. And this is what I said to you before. Once you've got the brand, once people have, as, as you know, they start talking about you. Right. How do you throw fuel on that? Mm -hmm. How do you keep that far? How do you stay relevant? Correct. And we know so many, and I'm not calling myself this, but we know so many artists that rest on their laurels, take six years before the next album come out, and it doesn't go anywhere, and now these one-hit wonders. They're coming out left, it left, right. It actually has, it takes work to stay relevant. Your relevancy is, and I, I didn't realize this until years ago, um, I, you did a Facebook Live with me on my platform. So I invited you in, you did the Facebook Live, and still at this time, I didn't know what your, how big your brand was. But what I noticed after the live, people, a lot of people started asking me to connect you with them and how do you know him? And it dawned on me in that moment, okay, this guy's not reachable, yet he's personable. How, That's a great how do you how, well how do you do that? So it's the classic, it's the classic agent syndrome. If you ever go up to a celebrity at an event mm -hmm. and, you know, forget how you do it, how you should put, you know, negotiate, how you should approach it. But if you get the chance to speak with someone that's a celebrity in your world right? and you go, hey, I'd love you to do this, they're going to say yes. They always say yes. And then the agent will say no. There's a conflict. Actually, he can't do it. Actually, that conflicts against the contract he's doing. He would love to help you because he's wonderful, but it's a good cop, bad cop. Of course. Okay. okay. So what I do is I make myself uh, approachable by distinction. If you're an ass, if you're after something, um, I'm going to shun you away. So I make sure people know that I am quite happy about being blunt. <laughs> you don't and, say. Well, it saves time, doesn't it, it? It sure does. I make sure that people are aware that if they show up, I'll say to people, hey, reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, anyway, reach out to me. But if you're dull and boring, I'll ignore it. Listen. I will say that on a show. And so you'll get people that quite simply will be terrified because of that <laughs> distinction and that definition. So I make myself approachable because I did notice very early on all of the people that I admired. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to have conversations with rock stars, science rock stars, you know, geniuses, Correct. business icons. It's been from the Vatican to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I have been incredibly fortunate with the conversations I've had. And I've noticed it's middle management that shut their ears off. Okay. Successful people are always open to listen and will give you that, and then they'll move on. Got it. But if it moves the needle, hey, you've got my attention. I noticed that the more prolific you got, the more successful you became, mm -hmm. the more of a student you became. Those people True. that are out there going, you can't teach me, are middle management and still have that car on a lease. That makes sense. That makes sense. When, when we, one, thank you for the answer. Great, great answer. I hope you guys out there can put two and two together to figure out how to make yourself become the obvious choice, but not make yourself available to everyone. Um, when we come back from break, I want to find out, and what I'm going to ask folks is what the future of branding looks like. We're going to talk about your speakeasy. Um, and there's some other questions I'm going to have. I'm not going to put them all right here, but again, I'm Dom Fawcett with Think React Lead TV show in studio with uh, the one and only Steve Sims. And when we come back from break, you're going to find out more about this individual right here. And we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Think React Lead TV show. I'm your host, Dom Fawcett, your executive coach and leadership speaker in studio with Steve Sims. And uh, we just got finished talking about a little bit of branding. Uh, the question I want to ask or I'm, I'm going to ask is what does the future of branding look like? And depending upon how you answer this next question will depend upon how that answer looks. But one thing that I've seen strategically, not even strategically, just throughout the years of knowing you on social media is the connection that you and your son have in this space from your dirt bikes, um, having fun with that since he was, I don't know how old, to now you two race on all kinds of tracks around the world on some pretty high-end bikes. 
What has that done for you as a dad, being able to provide that experience? Um, it's there's not there's nothing harder than being a parent. We, right. you, you know, we, <laughs> yes. Anyone out there can agree with that. Correct. It's a thankless, gimme, gimme job, <laughs> where and, and, and it's horrible. And I actually, I actually view myself as a pretty crap dad, mm -hmm. but I try. Okay. You know, because the, the rule book's not out there. And my son has this very uh, analytical, borderline anal kind of view on things where he's the only one I know on the planet that reads the manual. You know? <laughs> okay. For me, that just to hold the door open, but he'll digest the damn thing. And so we were very, very different. And as youngsters, I was always like, hey, take a chance. Because I came from East London, you know, we only got somewhere by taking a chance. Ground and pound. Hustling away, right. trying to find out what would work, what wouldn't work, Use became these. education. Right. Yeah, it was that. Right. He didn't have that. So we couldn't kind of relate. So for very much of the early years, it was tough. Okay. You know, I was trying to connect with him um, and we had nothing in common until it was weird. One day he came back and these kids had these Razor scooters. Oh, yeah. And these tiny little wheels will jam on a tiny little stone. <laughs> Yet Razor also did this little dirt bike. So the bigger wheels, it wouldn't jam. And you know what it's like. You see these scooters going down the road. They hit a little stats. <laughs> right. <up. laughs> Suddenly they got no nose. I didn't want that to happen to him. Okay. Um. So I showed him this little dirt bike and went, oh, what about this? Yeah. And he took to that. And he was like, that ain't fast enough for me now. You know, I don't want to let that electric. <laughs> Where's one with an engine? And it just took off. Now, the funny thing is, I was never on dirt bikes. Okay. You know, from being in London, there's not many dirt tracks Very in London. True. So I was always on street bikes. So at the age of 40, and he was like 11, um, he got into dirt bikes. And I'm like, I'm coming in as well. So I got to, and that was it. We had no other conversation but could jabber on about tire pressure for hours. <laughs> and we suddenly realized that there were other ways to connect and communicate. Mm. And some of the riding, here's the funny thing. I don't remember a lot of the days of the tracks. Okay. And as a guy that was now in his 40s, getting into his 50s, enjoying too much whiskey, too many steaks, I wasn't actually in feet, you know, fit physical perfection okay. right so you know i'd come back from doing dirt biking for the day and it would take me a <laughs> week right. to just kind of like be able to walk again but what i always remembered and what i'll never forget is the two hour drive it would take me to get there yeah. the two hours back that we would stop off at either and get a western burger or get a carl's jr it was always denny's or carl's jr okay and i can't go past a denny's or carl's jr now Without thinking of me and my boy right. just covered in dirt. Of course. Just just talking about the suspension setup or the preload and stuff like that. And and that was what connected us. And then as we as I was getting more into the branding and marketing, because I I ended up doing a lot of marketing for you know Sir Elton John's Oscar Party, the New York Fashion Week, Kentucky Derby, Formula One. Mm -hmm. You know, I ended up getting some really good gigs. And I started working on how you show up, okay. how you're visual, how you're actually getting your message out there and how you're amplifying it. I was that. Well, he was very much mechanical and engineering. So he was all about the pixelation, the scalability, the reach, the paid versus organic. Right. He knew all of that language that I couldn't <laughs> understand. So I'd get a client going, look, I'm looking at doing this. I'd make sure they remove the uh, removed the confusion from that message first. Okay. And then I'd go, Henry, do you want to scale it? Facebook ads, Google ads, paid promotions, challenges, all of that. He knew that. And it was funny enough that it was during COVID two years ago, sitting in the in the kitchen or stood in the kitchen. Claire, my wife, turns around and she went, you're on one side of the fence, you're on the other side of the fence. When are you two going to just do it together? <laughs> and we had never thought about this, seen this. Um, and Henry did what we all do, get on a motorbike and just take a ride and let it fester. 
Does he really want to be in business with his dad? Of course. You know, because his dad's this. <laughs> right. He's this. We're very different to the point that it's become a yin yang. Okay. Um, and so we launched we launched Sims Media. I saw that. Um, wondered if it would take off. Um, and all of a sudden we're getting accolades from everyone from Elton, Roland Frazier, Jim Quick, some of the biggest names out there, because we didn't have a background in it. Mm. which actually, again, was a benefit to us because we weren't repeating the same mistakes and crap that yeah, everyone else, else was doing. Everybody else in the industry does. That makes sense. Now, I've run concierge businesses. I've run fashion weeks in New York. I've run <laughs> A-list Oscar parties. I turn left when everyone turns right. Mm-hmm. Some of the time I got it wrong, <laughs> but I learned. In the process. Yeah. So I became very educated on what works and what doesn't. So we do things differently. You know, as you know, we launched my book in a whiskey bar in right. in, uh, in um, Hollywood. Just shot a video. In fact, a friend of ours shot. We didn't put any planning behind it. We just went to a bar and got drunk with really there cool people. That's me. If you like it, buy the book. If you don't like it, buy Harry Potter. Right. You know, <laughs> get something else. But um, we just learned how to stand up mm-hmm. to stand out. And me and Henry became very, very close on doing that, and now we're equal partners in the business. You know what I like about you, Henry, and folks? Henry's in the studio. He's just behind the scenes. He's shy. Right. (laughs) Said no one ever. I've met a lot of young men that are the sons of industry celebrities, and they just are douchebags. So, sir, thank you very much for not being that. I appreciate that. Quite pleased about um, that. And, you know, I, I, I've i never talked to you about anything. I know you're not in the interview, but just go with me on this one. About anything outside of motorcycles. Like the only conversations we've ever had was always motorcycles. But what I find about that is it 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 makes you get to know the person. Mm. And each time I've been around you, one, thank you, right? When you come into town, uh, there's times we meet up and there's just this normalcy that you bring to the, to the table, yet you're this big brand. Um, and I think that's what attracts people to you, but your brand is so big. What are you doing for for the future of your brand or what, what does the future of branding look like in your opinion for guys just getting into the space? Well, um, let's not just pick on the guys, the guys and girls and anyone, and anyone confused, um, which is all of us branding today is much more of an effort. And you need, it is a focus on what to do. For again, let's repeat it. And I want everyone to make a note of it. Branding is what people say about you. Mm -hmm. Marketing is what you say about you. Right. Okay. So you want to make sure the first thing that happens is that what you stand for, who you are and what you do is crystal clear. Okay. There's this word that's out there at this moment that absolutely makes me puke. Authenticity. Hate it. The second you actually acknowledge someone else for being authentic, you're acknowledging that the rest of the room are not. Mm -hmm. Okay? Authenticity should be something as normal as walking and breathing. Very true. I would agree with that statement. It should be me going, oh, look at Dom. He's breathing. Let's give him a round of applause. (laughs) It's stupid. Right. So what we should focus on should not be authenticity. I actually saw a speaker go up on stage once, pretended he was crying and getting emotional, and he went, I apologize for being authentic. He actually said that on stage, you know? And you saw the entire room just go, are you kidding me? It was ridiculous. Authenticity is not a marketing strategy. Correct. Transparency is. Mm -hmm. It's effort and focus. What needs to happen is you need to be impossible to misunderstand. I don't want to look at Dom and go, yeah, I think he does this. I, want to, I know he does this, this, this. He stands for that, that, that. Now, I don't have to agree with it. Correct. That's the beauty about transparency. I don't have to agree with it, but now you've made it very easy for me, for me to make the decision as to whether or not I relate to it. Very true. Very and true so line. branding today is removing the confusion out of what you stand for, what you provide, what solution you provide mm-hmm. and to who's got the problem and to make it very easy for me to go, that's the person for me. So branding today is simplicity and transparency. And in a world of mass distortion and distraction where people are arguing opinions 
with facts, yes, which is ridiculous. Right. If this is a fact and this is your opinion, that's your belief. That's what you think. Not it's true. not truth. It's your belief. It's your opinion. Fact overrides opinions. Mm-hmm. So today we need to focus on clarity. We need to remove the confusion from your brand. And here, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a working example. Okay. On a desktop, it can't be done on a phone. It can't be done on a tablet. It has to be done on a large monitor, a desktop, or on a laptop. Okay? You pick your brand, which one you want to use. Open up all of your social feeds. LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, TikTok, your whatever. Then look at them all on there and ask yourself the, the question, am I the same person in every single one of those? Hold that thought right there. There's more to this. When we come back from break, we're going to finish this conversation. Um, I like where this is going. Again, I'm Don set with the Think React Leave TV show in studio with Steve Sims, and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Think React League TV show. I'm your host, Dom Fawcett, in studio with Steve Sims. And if you're just tuning in, we've covered some strong, some pretty solid areas around branding, um, things that you can implement in what it is you're doing or probably not doing. And just before break, Steve Sims was talking about bringing, pulling up your laptop or utilizing your computer monitor and pulling up all your social media platforms. Let's finish that conversation. Yeah, basically, we, we'd stress that we needed to focus on clarity. Mm-hmm. And the biggest source of confusion, nine times out of ten, is you. Um, and people actually make an effort of doing that. You know, they launch a website, and the first thing they do is they get someone else to write articulate copy that they would never even say, let it know. <laughs> exactly. So you've got to be, basically make yourself fully transparent and easy to relate to. So my suggestion was to open up on a large screen every single one of your social feeds and then ask yourself, is this me? You know, if someone doesn't know me and they saw me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, is it me? If they saw me in the street, would they be able to go, oh, that's that fella, you know? So what will happen when you do it? And I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. You'll look at LinkedIn (laughs) And you're leaning up against a, a, a library. You right. you, you've almost exactly. got a cognac and a, and, a, right. and a pipe. Right. And then you go over to Facebook and you're sitting there in a hot tub with a Mai Tai and this girl's gone wild. Right. You know, you think, oh, on LinkedIn, I've got to be professional. Yeah, right, I've got right. to be Right, right, it's got to be buttoned up. And on, on Facebook, oh, I can, I can be all over. Right. There. Have you noticed Apple is the exact same on every single social? Nike is the exact same. Ford is the exact same. So who the hell told you that you've got to be this on LinkedIn and this on Pinterest? You have got to show up. And you've also got to understand what are social platforms. And here's a little game for you. If you get all of your friends, no matter where they are in the planet, and you go, hey, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., I'm going to do a Zoom call with all of you and we're going to talk about the news. You know, what are the headlines? What's going on? What did you hear? They'll all come up with the same headlines. It'll all be the same headlines about what's going on. Mm-hmm. But then you say to them, where did you get that news? CNN, CNBC, BBC, KTLA, Fox News. The platforms are different, but they're delivering the same news. Correct. Your social platforms are the same. I know people that have no idea I've got an Instagram account, but they follow me on Twitter. I know people that love me on Instagram, but they don't know I'm on LinkedIn. Because it's not where they consume the news. So don't change the news to suit the platform repeat your message the same verbatim on every single platform. I want to say that's genius, but it's very simple. It ain't genius. It is simple. It, right. And your have you ever had a client call or Henry where you provide that information and they start with but? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, someone someone's educated them that, that no, that's not the way it's supposed <laughs> exactly. to be. The, whenever we we do have a call and we talk to the people, and Henry's devised something that's really cool called a social fingerprint, where he actually goes through without your help to find out not only where you show up but how you show up, mm-hmm. and then constructs an action plan of what you need to do. And he actually, we've had people go, oh, no, 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 no. But on Pinterest, I have to be there. Oh, on Facebook, I have to be <laughs> right. there. You end up being multiple different characters. 
And the one thing about branding that is paramount that you should know, it should take 0% effort to be you. 0%. That's a good one. But how many people, how many people watching this are lawyers, realtors, mechanics, and they have to slide into a stereotype to conform to be someone else they're not? And they're trying to build a unique brand by first conforming to everyone else. If you think about anyone out there that we revere, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Richard Branson, the Pope, none of these people did it by following anyone else. Mm -mm. They stood out by first standing up. Let me think about this question first, just because of how, how, how long or short this segment is. But no matter the age, when people use the word unique, um, but when I think of branding, you're just yourself. Like you're, you're a brand, obviously, but you're, you're Steve Sims first. And there's a there's a rough and tough about yourself. There's a rumble about yourself. There's a you're associated with a type of drink. You're associated with a type of motorcycle, <laughs> right? You're associated with a type of color that you wear. That's you. What do you say to the guy and or, or gal as you're simplifying this approach to building this? I'm going to call it a universal brand as they start to put people on Mars. Um, what do you say to the guy who struggles with trying to just B, and you're coaching because you're not cheap. I know this, and you're trying to help them build this brand. What do you say to the the guy that struggles with trying to build a brand as simple as Steve Sims? And we can start the conversation, but when we come back from break. I want to talk about that a, a lot. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry, Steve. This is what I'll do. I don't want to rush this answer because I want our audience to be able to implement the information that you're going to provide. So, folks, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to read. Pete, the question, and we're going to spend the last part of this show talking about what you need to do um, as a person that's overcomplicating things to be on the level. I mean, you're an author, you are an international brand, and I'm repeating this so people can understand like how simple it is, but how difficult they make it. And you live a fantastic life. You mentioned what you're 56. Mm. So for those of you that are, you know, on the other side of, you know, a 50, like it's possible. So there's a lot bunched up in that. But when we come back from break, I, I would like to talk about it. Not for me, not for you, but for the people that need to hear the message that you're going to just imp drop on them when we come back from break. Folks, again, I'm Dom Fawcett in studio with Steve Sims. Stick around and I want you to grab your pen and paper um, or your laptop. I'm, I'm, I am dating myself because the information that's about to be provided it is is what people pay thousands of dollars for. You just got to implement it and listen. And we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Think React Lead Show. I'm your host, Dom Fawcett, your executive coach and leadership speaker. And if you were part of the last, like the ending segment that we had and the, the question that was asked, that's going to, once the answer is revealed, help you out. Again, I want to reiterate, uh, we're going to be here for a minute, but I want you to take out pad, pen, uh, because the information that Steve is about to provide, Steve Sims is about to provide, is going to change how you look at branding as a whole. So Steve, just to reiterate, not for yourself, but for the audience, um, what do you say to the guy or gal that pulls up their LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, all of the accounts, looks mm -hmm. at it and just becomes overwhelmed, yet they look at you and they're like, this dude has this international brand, I call it a universal brand, but he makes it look so easy. How do you have steps to help somebody yeah, yeah. to get to that next level? So it takes effort, mm -hmm. but it is easy. Okay. Okay. It's like, it's like, you know, pushing a, a, a car, you know, once you've got it off that, that <laughs> exactly. thing, it gets easier right. as the momentum comes up. So the first thing you've got to do is identify who you are. What do you do now? If you're a plumber, okay. You're a plumber, okay? You repair people's issues with household plumbing. Right. In your LinkedIn profile, it should have a current picture of you and then that job description. Okay. Like I've literally spoken to world-famous speakers, 
And I've gone, oh, you're looking to do more speaking gigs. Yeah, yeah. Because the speaking market's getting very competitive. A little bit. Especially with COVID. Everyone thinks they should be on right. stage. <laughs> and they shouldn't. Um, <laughs> thanks to Clubhouse. And so, which, yeah, thanks to Clubhouse. <laughs> a Clubhouse stage it's is not, not speaking. Stage. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, you get these people to go, yeah, 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 I want to be a speaker. You know, I can do it. And you say to them, let me look at your bio. And in the bio, it doesn't say the word speaker. Mm-hmm. On my bio in LinkedIn, it says author, because I am, right. speaker, coach, and I even put in there, amazing podcast guest. That's a good one. I put it That's in there. That's a good one. I'm going to steal that. But well, you know, how much, you know how much LinkedIn costs you to actually put that in your bio? No, I don't know. Nothing. I didn't think so. Okay. Exactly. That's trick awesome. question. This is, <laughs> hey, got this me. is free of charge right, shit. Right, right. People literally, and you said it earlier, they go out of their way to confuse their client. If you're a speaker, it should be in your bio, Mm -hmm. okay? If you're overweight, that's the picture that should be in there because you're overweight, that's your build. If you're skinny, that's the picture. Don't take a picture that you shot in in in, in 1985 because your hair was good that day, you know? You want to make sure the pictures you put up there are yours. I had a realtor that sold me my house, okay? I don't care what the realtor looks like. She could have turned up with three legs. Wasn't going to date her. I was going to buy a house. Right. But her picture <laughs> looked as though she was from like the 1980s on like a Farrah Fawcett commercial. <laughs> the hair was there. Right. The lighting. It was all misted. Right. You know? When she turned up, she was 95. <laughs> she was close to the Yoda. Right. The bottom line of it is she turned up, not only confused me because it was a different picture, mm-hmm. but actually aggravated me. I felt as though she had lied to me. Right. Because the picture I had seen on the advertising showed someone completely different that turned up. Now, if you understood, I didn't want to date her. I wanted her to do the best job she could do to get me the best deal on that house. Right. Didn't care what she looked Correct. like. Correct. So way too many people today care what you look look like. Here's the key. It ain't about you. It's about what you can do for somebody else. So what you do is with your socials, make sure the photo's current, make sure that the bio is concise to what you do and it's primitive and it's blunt. I do this, I am that, I solve this. Now, when you're sitting there like a lot of people, not like us because we don't care, but a lot of people out there are scared about what they look like on video. All right. Very true. Great Again, point. I'm, I'm all ears. It's not about you. Right. No one is here on the end of this going, my God, I want to date that Steve Sim. You know? <laughs> nobody, I guarantee nobody. Right. But I'm here to help you. And if you just took down the knowledge that we spoke about, mm-hmm. it'll improve you. And if you're doing a video on any one of your social feeds, your, as long as the message is helping the other person. Right. Again, they care about what you're saying rather than what you look like. And here's the first step, because you said, how do they do this? Pretend you're going to see your best mate. Okay. What would you wear? What would you dress up like? You know, you're going to see your best mate at maybe the barbecue party on a Saturday. Maybe you're not going to wear dirty jeans, so you maybe put some smart jeans on. Clean t-shirt. Maybe do your hair. That's how you should show up. You know? That's a good... That's exactly... That's a very How are you going to show up to your mate's barbecue party this Saturday? And that's your profile picture. That's your picture on your, your all your social feeds. And make it concise. Hey, Steve, what do you do? Oh, I'm a speaker, author, and I'm a pretty amazing podcast guest. <laughs> that's what should be in your bio. You know, you bring up... I, I, I've never heard it put that way. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that when you mentioned that. But just to reiterate, folks... Show up on your social media the way you would show up at your friend's barbecue like that. And and to to even solidify your point, not that it needs to be solidified. My first social media picture was this one where I'm pointing to my head and I'm all assertive. And then when I did one with which now shows with a black T-shirt on, pe- more people started reaching out to me. Do you know why? I don't know why. Go ahead. Because the first picture was all about you. Mm. You were overthinking what you wanted the other person to think. You can't solve that riddle. It's worse than the Da Vinci Code. You don't know what the other person is thinking or what they're going to react to when you're doing this. 
I remember once I was having a, a I was having a good night with my family. I was at home. I'd poured an old fashioned, and I, I I had a picture taken like this, and I had a I just I was happy. It was genuine. I was with my family, and so what did I do? That was now my profile picture. Why? Because I was with my family. I was smiling. I was happy. I was in a good moment. Mm -hmm. I had my favorite drink with me. <laughs> exactly. It was good. And do you know this would be this will make you giggle? I had someone contact me. And they said, yeah, we hear you're in marketing and branding. And I went, yeah. I said, how can I help you? And they went, yeah, but we saw your LinkedIn profile picture and it's you with an alcoholic beverage. You don't do that on LinkedIn. <laughs> now, it was the same picture <laughs> on every single one right. of my social feeds, but she'd actually taken the time to contact me to tell me that you don't post that kind of picture. And I went, why not? It's LinkedIn. It's a professional network. It was a damn professional old fashioned. <laughs> she actually argued with me that that wasn't an appropriate picture to post on there. But you know, the funny thing is, I got so many cheers and that kind of thing. Right. I was now relatable. Mm -hmm. I like to have a whiskey. I like Steve, I don't have a whiskey, but I do drink wine. I'm going to cheers you with my wine. We even during COVID, and we ended up running them for what eight months, nine months. We literally went out to our community, and I think you were on uh, a couple of them as well. And we said, "Look, this Friday night, I'm going to celebrate the end of the week and just work out whether or not I earned it. I'm going to pour an old fashioned, tell bad jokes for my family. Let's do it on Zoom, and you can join us because no one could get out then, could right. they? Right? No, we're stuck. We had hundreds of people join us on Zoom to tell bad jokes. And people were like, well, I actually haven't had a drink for like 30 years, but I'll join you with a cup of coffee. Bring it in. I said, it's a, it's a happy hour. I didn't dictate what you got to drink. Right. Turn up with water. We had people, we had them from Indonesia, from Australia. Breakfast was sitting there with a cup of coffee in their dressing gown in that happy hour Zoom. So the bottom line of it is we made ourselves approachable by doing what people commonly do which is have a drink, tell a bad joke. And these were some bad jokes, weren't they? These were, <laughs> if you got, if you said a bad joke, right. we would actually invite you back for the following week to tell a worse one. And <laughs> we had some of the best dad jokes known to mankind. But we made ourselves impossible to misunderstand by, again, not putting the effort into what we looked like. We literally did them from our garage or around our barbecue. You know, in the garage, bike in the back, mm -hmm. stick it up, push play. Hello, everyone. We didn't put too much effort into that. We put effort into making sure we had some good jokes for you and we kept you entertained for one hour. We focused on you, not on us. I remember when I saw one of your videos years ago before I moved to the house I was in now. And I know it was during the summertime. You had your bikes in the background. I'm like, I'm going to go in the garage and shoot a video with my bikes in the background. You know, we both have Ducatis. You know, I, I could do this. And I just turned everything on. The lighting was off. I started sweating. And I was like, you know what? I forget this guy's in California. I'm in Arizona. <laughs> like I had to stay, I had to stay, stay in my lane. Um, and 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 speaking of staying in your lane, you've from what I've seen, I came on social media when I was pretty old. Um, I've only been doing this for five years. But since I've seen you, there's no inconsistency with who you are. And jokingly, you know, people people will say, you know, Steve just doesn't care. He he doesn't care yet. At all the people I've had access to and met, you're probably one of the, not to make this weird, but you're one of the most compassionate, caring people that I've met in this industry. Have you always been that way? And if if not, like what what makes you that part of who Steve is? I'm actually very antisocial, and it's a good thing. You know, I am. For as good as my network is, and you know I know some mm -hmm. pretty sweet people, I'm a crap networker. You put me, you say, hey, Steve, there's a networking party tonight. Come. I would go because you'd invited me, and then I would stand in the corner <laughs> growling at anyone that came within five <laughs> feet of me. With, with your drink in your hand. With my drink in right. my hand. I look like this because it repels people, and that, that helps me. Mm -hmm. But I love conversations, and I love people. So I'm antisocial, but I love conversations. Mm. It's an oxymoron. It definitely is. But I want to know, what are you doing that's impacting others? And how are you doing it? And can I help you with that? You know, what's your goal? What is your focus? 
I love people to move with impact. Mm. I hate it when people come up and go, hey, how you doing? What are you watching on Netflix at the moment? What did you have for dinner right. last night? I don't care. Right. But if you're actually working on something, I want to know what you're working on. Why is that important to you? It can have no, and quite often has no relevance to me. And quite often I don't even understand it. <laughs> but from an outsider's perspective, right. Maybe I can give you a little tip on how you can amplify your message mm -hmm. to more of your target market. Right. I want people to be better. I want people to help each other. When someone drops something, I want you to be the first one to pick it up. I want you to open up a door for a woman coming through the door. I want you to give up a chair for someone that's elderly. I force that because I want a world that I want to be proud to live in. And I want a world that my kids can grow up in. So that's why I try to just hopefully change it a little bit more right. to design a, a world I want to be part of. I love it. I love it. And I'm not saying just I love it because that's a phrase we hear a lot, but the fact that you show up in a way that's um, relatable, but there's a, you hold a high respect for yourself. Um, in the 80s, that was pretty normal, but in a world that we're living in now, uh, you just don't see that in a lot of men it's got to, do you remember, I, 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 there's one horrible moment that hopefully George will never remember. Uh, George is my youngest. Okay. He's now 16, so he's a aggravating teenager. Of course. But I remember when he was like 11 years old and all of my kids, you know, and Henry's a, a, a great young man mm -hmm. and he will openly rush to open up a door for, for, for a lady coming through the door, right. you know. Um, Chivalry is not a choice. It should just be a standard. And I taught that to George. And I remember we were at Starbucks at the bottom of our drive in Studio City back in LA. And uh, he straightway leaps to the door of Starbucks because this girl's walking through and she's got two cups of coffee. Okay. And he opens up the door and she looks down and she went, I'm quite capable of opening up my own door. Said that to an 11 year old young man. Wow. And of course, what happens? He's now confused. And so I said to him, George, you didn't open up the door for her. You opened it up for you because that's the man you are. And I'm glad to say he's still an aggravating teenager and probably will be for a few more years. But he opens up the door and he'll always open up the door for his mum and he'll always carry mm. the shopping in. So you do that for you. You have standards for you, not for someone else. Folks, you, I, I want you to say that to yourself a couple of times. You have standards for you not for someone else. So that will eliminate any emotions that take place when somebody doesn't acknowledge or has a, a, a inverse impact or effect on how they acknowledge you. Um, so as we wrap up, Steve, I just want to say thank you very much for coming in. Um, I don't need to say it, but you've added a lot of value and folks watch this again, implement what was said and at, where can people find you? If they want to look. Well, that's another tip for social. Make yourself easy. Don't be, you know, Steve Sims, one, two, three, and underscore, Steve underscore, underscore right. you know, exactly. hyphen emoji or right. whatever. <laughs> I am Steve D. Sims, D for dashing, Sims, just one M, anywhere. Steve right. D. Sims on Instagram, stevedsims.com is the website, Steve D. Sims on LinkedIn. Guess what I am on Twitter? Steve D. Sims. Big surprise. Yep, Google them. <laughs> Make yourself impossible to, to, to misunderstand and easy to find. Awesome. I appreciate that, Steve. Again, I'm Dom Fawcett in studio this time with Steve Sims. This is the Think React Lead TV show, and we'll see you on the other side.